Hey there YouTube, I've been using capacitive sensors in a number of my projects recently and I just wanted to share a really quick, cheap and easy way to set up a capacitive sensor with your Arduino project. So for this demo I'm going to be using uh, ESP8266, um, this is a um, Wemos D1 Mini. Um, any Arduino uh, board is going to work as long as, it has, um, as long as you have a digital in and a digital out available. The next thing I have is a piece of tin foil that I've soldered a lead to. And the last thing that you're going to need is a fairly high value resistor. In this case, I'm using a 10K. Um, I've also used you know, 47Ks, 100Ks. Um, you know, I'm not sure what the low end is, but if you um, use too high of notice, there's a little bit of a lag, um, which you know, it's a little bit more accurate, but then there's a little bit more of a lag. So just some trade-offs. So I'm going to take and I'm going to plug one end of this 10K resistor into D0. The next end I'm going to plug into my breadboard. Now I'm going to take a lead and I'm going to go from D1 to the same spot on the breadboard. And the last thing I need to plug in is my capacitive tin foil sensor and that's going into again the same spot on the breadboard. So I've got the resistor going from D0 to the breadboard, I've got the lead going from D1 to the breadboard, and I have the capacitive tin foil going to the same, all to the same spot on the breadboard. So the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and hold down the reset button while plugging in USB. This tutorial assumes that you already have the drivers for your um, Arduino board installed as well as the Arduino IDE. If you don't, there are a lot of great videos out there and I'll see if I can link one or two in the description. So from the IDE, we can click and verify that the sketch is correct. You can see I'm using the capacitive sensor library, which is available from Managed Libraries. And it is the one by Paul Badger and Paul Stofrigan. Uh, I apologize if I've butchered anybody's name. So the sketch compiled correctly, we'll go ahead and upload it. Now as soon as this is done, we can open up the serial monitor and see what we're getting for output here. So every 500 milliseconds we're pulling the sensor, and if I put my finger down on here, boom, we get a higher, much higher value. So depending on your sensor and your resistor, you're going to get different values here. But it's pretty easy to see that you know there's a fairly significant difference between a zero, one, two, depending on again your combination you might get at the bottom versus the 50 to I've had um, some of my sensors reading out in the 300 range um, and so you can set up your uh, thresholds uh, pretty straightforward and pretty simply. Um, if you run into problems uh, make sure that your solder connection is good, make sure that um, you can use a, a larger um, sensor. Uh, I've used uh, foil tape before, which works okay. Um, the adhesive kind of gets in the way of uh, the connection sometimes, so um, there's different options. Anyways, uh, that's all I had, and I hope it helps somebody out, so happy hacking, everyone.